Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for May 25th, 2020. Walt Disney World remains silent on the subject of its park reopenings, likely monitoring the progress of ongoing phased reopenings at Disney Springs. While Walt Disney World won't be submitting its plans until sometime this week, according to Amanda Dukes of West 2 News, a Disney executive has informed Governor Ron DeSantis and Vice President Mike Pence that the company is considering reopening the park at 20 to 30 percent capacity. Uh, this, of course, is not unlike the scenario at Shanghai Disneyland, which opened at 20 percent capacity on Monday, May 11th, with a reservation system in place. The park plans to increase ticket sales by 5,000 each week until Shanghai Disneyland is selling at 30 percent capacity. Governor Ron DeSantis's Reopen Florida Task Force Executive Committee has considered the notion of a phased reopening that includes only locals and state residents, but there is no confirmation on whether this will actually be the case. Universal Orlando has stated that it will be reopening on June 5th with limited capacity, but has not given any percentages or numbers of the like. Wine Bar George tweeted about their new frozen and fries combos on Friday, so we went on over to check it out at their quick service window, The Basket. The Basket is a quaint pickup window that specializes in fancy snacks to go, most popularly known for its frozen drinks like the Frozcado and the Friesling, both concocted with Dole Whip. The frozen and fries are not actually a combo offered on the menu, according to the employees we asked. Uh, those were merely the pairing suggestions. There are four flavors of loaded fries in all. At $8 each, there's queso, togarashi, California, and buffalo. The queso fries feature a roasted red pepper four cheese sauce, pickled Fresno peppers, and cilantro, while the buffalo fries feature buffalo salt, buffalo sauce, blue cheese chunks, and chives. We decided to try the California and Togarashi flavors, uh, each $8 in order, and you get a 16-ounce carton of fresh fries. The base of the fries is the same for all varieties, so they're all the same standard square-cut French fries with the same texture. California has a generous layer of fresh bacon bits, and the Togarashi uh, fries are tossed in a house-made Togarashi seasoning blend, which gives them a little bit of a kick, but are still palatable for those who don't like much spice. If you'd like a more in-depth review of the items, check it out at WDWNT.com. Pizza Ponte, Morimoto Asia, and Aerophile have all reopened at Disney Springs as of Friday, May 22nd. Now, Terralina Crafted Italian and Paddlefish have announced they will be reopening on May 29th from noon to 8 p.m., joining many of the other restaurants and businesses that have already reopened with the new social distancing measures. Both restaurants have announced that guests must wear face masks at all time unless they're enjoying their meal or sipping on a beverage. They'll also have social distancing measures in place throughout dining areas following local and state regulations in compliance with the CDC. Reservations can be made for both through open table. Guests leaving Disney Springs throughout the week received a QR code to scan and fill out a survey. Now Disney is following up with a second survey to garner even more detailed responses. One of the questions asked uh, of guests is whether they feel that the bundle of new health and safety procedures is adequate and to what degree. Is it just right, not enough, or too much? Following up on that question, they are asked whether the same bundle of health and safety procedures, if implemented throughout the Walt Disney World Resort theme parks, would affect a guest's willingness to visit. Would you be more willing, less willing, or unchanged in your willingness to visit the Walt Disney World theme parks under the same conditions? Finally, Disney asked about the controversial required face masks. I don't know why this is controversial, but to each their own. And whether the requirement of face masks for your entire party will impact your desire to visit again. I will say, I personally, whatever it takes to go have fun, I am on board. And if that includes having to wear a face mask at certain times, I am fine with it. I understand if you don't want to wear one, but that uh, is your own decision. And I think at that point, you know, obviously... Come visit when it's not required, then. I don't think you need to put yourself through that if you don't want to. So um, it is what it is, I think, for everyone's safety. And, the, you know, just think of the comfort of people around you, I think. Um, everyone wants to feel comfortable. So if you can make everyone feel comfortable and everyone can have a good day, uh, it's best not to focus on the mask thing. And having been out in 90-something degrees with the mask, I can tell you it's not great, but it's no worse than wearing clothes in Orlando. It is hot under anything and everything you have on them hot under my glasses but i have to wear them can't see without them so it is what it is it's, it's what we'll have to do for the time being to go have fun and i think uh we should be doing it will be, be willing to do whatever it takes to, to go have fun a new patent granted to disney suggests that new technology would help make lightsaber training at star wars galactic star cruiser as close to real as it appears in the movies 
Uh, the patent granted May 19th is for the calibration of a magnometer within a device used as part of an augmented or virtual reality game. With this new system, people using an augmented reality device may not have to undergo an intense calibration before gameplay, like completing a motion before the game actually begins, as the calibration may be incorporated with the gameplay itself. This patent could possibly indicate that lightsabers used in the experience will beha uh, behave very close to how we've seen them in the films, and you won't really need to go through some sort of weird calibration process beforehand to make sure it works. The images used in the patent itself feature a device very similar to a lightsaber hilt, linked up with a virtual reality headset. All in all, this patent suggests a smoother, uh, much smoother gameplay for lightsaber training, making for an experience that's more realistic to what you might expect. Of course, the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser is expected to open in 2021. We previously reported that the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex at Walt Disney World was the clear frontrunner to house the NBA for the remainder of the 2019-2020 season. And the NBA has just released a very interesting statement on Twitter. Executive Vice President of Communications Mike Bass confirmed that the NBA and the Walt Disney Company are, quote-unquote, engaged in an exploratory con conversation. Uh, former cast member turned sports commentator Keith Smith's piece in Yahoo Sports called the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex an ideal spot to salvage the season. And the Twitter sphere has been speculating about the upcoming announcement for weeks now. See what happens. Um, some people have noted that Coronado Springs is showing no availability through October. So maybe that's where they're going to put everyone. Who knows? But it sounds like it might happen. WWNT's photographer friend at Bio Reconstruct took to the sky to show us the newly completed Tri-Circle D Ranch, which was rebuilt as the, part of the initial phase of the expansion going on at Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground for the upcoming Reflections, a Disney Lakeside Lodge. Imagineers have redesigned the Tri-Circle D Ranch, which uh, will offer a modern stable and updated outdoor spaces and facilities for the happiest horses on Earth. The new ranch will maintain the history and spirit of the original Tri-Circle D, while welcoming guests to explore exhibits of classic Disney equestrian artifacts, some of which date back to the 50s. There appears to be a completed walk path, or walking path in front of the stables. If you look closely, you can spot a few white horses, possibly ponies, near the stables. The ranch houses nearly 100 horses in a wide range of breeds, including uh, Appaloosas, Arabians, Belgians, Clydesdales, paint horses, I'm going to butcher this, Percherons, I think that is, I'm not a horse expert, and quarter horses, as well as the aforementioned Shetland ponies. The horses are used for horse-drawn carriage rides, wagon rides, horseback riding lessons, pony rides, and more during the holiday season, uh, including sleigh rides. California Governor Gavin Newsom approved stage two of the gradual reopening plan of the state of California on May 23rd, 2020. Despite this announcement, which leads a larger variety of local businesses uh, are permitted to reopen, there is still no official reopening date set for Disneyland Resort. The new rule set in place will allow for more indoor activities, including dining inside of restaurants and visiting in closed shopping malls. Outdoor museums and limited personal services, including tanning salons, car washes, and pet groomers, also fall under stage two. However, Orange County also instituted a new order for all residents and visitors requiring face coverings to be worn in public places, including work, uh, when a distance of six feet or more isn't possible. The Disneyland Resort has not responded to this new plan approval, but their statement from two days ago remains unchanged. Shanghai Disneyland has resumed operations, and with that came some changes to a shop in Adventure Isle. The previously known Laughing Monkey Trading Post is now known as Chippendale's Trading Post. And with the shop now rethemed, it brought the arrival of new merchandise themed to match the shop. A new cap embroidered with Chippendale featuring fuzzy inserts is available, plus a Chippendale mug with Clarice peeking out of the top. Matching Chippendale plushes are stocked across the shelves, and Shanghai Disneyland's newest set of plushes are called Noimos, which, are, which allow owners to customize and add their own clothes to Disney characters. These have been available in other Asian countries for a while, including Japan. Uh, there's a shirt with Chip and Dale wearing Aztec resembling uh, clothes uh, with the Shanghai Disney Resort logo at the bottom. And for loyal fans, there's a tote bag with Chip and Dale as well as their female counterpoint, uh, counterpart, excuse me, Clarice. The state of emergency for COVID-19 first implemented in Tokyo on April 8th and across Japan a week later has officially come to an end. The last prefectures, Tokyo, Kanagawa, Chiba, home of the Tokyo Disney Resort, Saitama, and Hokkaido, were finally released from the full state of emergency. With this, Japan has officially come out uh, the other side of the first wave of COVID-19. The government determined that it was safe to lift restrictions as all prefectures had passed below the threshold of 0.5 infections per 100,000 people. 
Tokyo has announced a phased reopening plan with theme parks in the third phase. Chiba Prefecture, home of the Tokyo Disney Resort, has not announced any such plan. Japan has largely avoided the worst of the pandemic. The country has seen 16,628 cases as of May 25th, with 13,612 recoveries and 851 deaths. The East Japan and West Japan Amusement Park Associations, along with supporting companies that include the Oriental Land Company and USJ, have released their guidelines for preventing the spread across Japan's many amusement and theme parks. These guidelines shall be reviewed and revised as necessary, taking into account the trends in the spread and the opinions of health experts. Top priorities will include monitoring the health of both employees and visitors, strengthening cleaning and disinfection, and maintaining social distancing of at least one meter apart. Admission restrictions should be in place, both for individual attractions and amusement facilities as a whole. Implementations of advanced reservation systems should be strongly considered by facility operators. Additionally, visitors should not be admitted into parks if they have a fever above 37.5 degrees Celsius or show symptoms of the cold or flu. When it's necessary for employees to be near guests, such as for ride safety checks, face shields and our masks should be worn, and they should refrain from speaking uh, near guests as much as possible. Masks and or face shields should be worn by visitors and employees. Entertainers who cannot wear masks should stay one meter away from visitors. Visitors and employees should be encouraged to wash their hands regularly with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or to use hand sanitizer regularly. Extra hand washing stations and disinfectant dispensers should be installed throughout the park. Eye contact items like guardrails, benches, vending machines, and ticket machine buttons uh, and other locations with frequent contact should be disinfected frequently. Vending machines very common in Japan, used for many, many things, more so than here in the United States, in case you're wondering why that's so important. Electronic cashless payments and self-checkout should be introduced as much as possible to lower the rate of cash transfer. All regulations should be posted on amusement facility websites. Ask visitors to refrain from visiting if they are ill, have had contact with someone who is positive or is suspected of infection, or have traveled to a country indicated by the Japanese government as high risk within the past 14 days. Announcements should be made throughout the day to ask visitors to practice those guidelines. Uh, for parks with high numbers of foreign visitors, these announcements should be made in foreign languages as well. Back in November, it was announced that the Oriental Land Company would implement increased security measures across the Tokyo Disney Resort ahead of the now-delayed Tokyo 2020 Olympics. These included metal detectors, x-ray machines, and increased security patrols. Now it seems like OLC is ready to completely roll out the increased security. Uh, during a trip around the Disney Resort line monorail, we spotted metal detectors and tables for bag inspection on the north side of the Disney Sea entrance. At least two x-ray machines, including the one already installed, uh, were also spotted. It's unknown if these machines will be ready at the south entrance as well as the Tokyo Disneyland Park before the reopening. In an effort to support the Tokyo Disney Resort during its extended closure, However long it may last, the Oriental Land Company secured a 200 billion yen, or about $1.858 billion line of credit through Japanese megabank Mizuho. According to NHK, Oriental Land signed a contract with Mizuho Bank on May 15th to secure the massive credit line as the extended closure drags in, on into its third month. While fiscal year 2019 results in March showed that OLC had about uh, 260 billion yen, or 2.415 uh, billion dollars in cash on hand. The aim is reportedly to secure against the prolonged impact this closure will have on OLC's business. Oriental Land Company is currently providing a leave allowance to its nearly 20,000 part-time cast members through at least the end of May. 5,400 full-time employees will also receive payment from May 18th for regular work minus four holiday days per month. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of News Today with WDW News Today. A few things I want to talk about. Number one, I want to congratulate our staff and thank all of you at home who donated uh, for our cast member pantry uh, fundraiser on Saturday. We raised, I think, after we finally factored everything in, almost $6,000 for the cast member pantry, which is making sure that furloughed Walt Disney World cast members have food and other things they really need during this time. It's a really great cause. It's a great thing they're doing. Um, so we're happy to help them out, and we're so happy that you have helped us support this wonderful cause. Thank you all very much. Also, keep in mind that this is the very last week of WDWNT Live, uh, where we've been live twice a day at 11 a.m. and 9 p.m., or sometimes 8 p.m. in the evening. Um, this is the final week. May 29th will mark the final day, and we do have a big wrap-up show 
on Friday night at 9 o'clock. So if you, if you enjoyed any of our programming um, during the worldwide closure of the Disney parks, you'll want to join us for our big goodbye um, to twice a day live shows. Obviously, Park Center, News Tonight, this show, and some others will be sticking on every week, but we won't be on twice a day anymore. Um, thank you for all who've tuned in. If you've enjoyed it, we've, we've had a great time. And uh, don't worry, every you know Thursday we'll still have news tonight, every Wednesday Park Center, Sunday's pressing issues, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can join us right here on News Today with WDW News Today. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Stay safe, everybody. Pressing Issues is the spin-off of the WDW News Today podcast segment as a long-form panel discussion in which some of the brightest minds of WDWNT analyze the biggest stories of the week and their impact on the Walt Disney Company, its parks, guests, and cast members. Join us every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, or afterward on the WDW News Today podcast feed.